Hey, Nick Inman from VolumeProfileTrader.com on Saturday, September 22nd. And I have a few things to say about the market, but and then we'll go into the trades. But first things first, let's just talk about the market is showing you. It, it continues to drift sideways and then move up, drift sideways, move up. So there's really no reason to look to sell this market for a longer term view. Okay, if the market pulls back, even if it's 35 points, which I'm just going off of basically retesting uh, the swing highs earlier this year, this low resistance, even if it touches that, not only is that a light pullback, but we're still going higher. To just say that it's kind of over, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So. Is there an opportunity for a pullback? Sure there is. If you're looking on a monthly chart, the point of control for the S&P, which in my opinion is the most important index, uh, that's why I cover it so often is because, you know, generally speaking, you know, I trade a lot of stocks in the S&P 500 and the S&P 100 for that matter. And as long as, long as the S&P 500 is constructive, you know, the, the charts that I'm buying, not necessarily the names, but the charts, it gives me, you know, confidence that we have more, to, more upside. So a pullback down to basically 1440, 1435, let's go at 1430 to 1440. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, from there, if the market continues lower, your next logical target would be either the value area high for uh, last month, which is 1413 or so, 1414, basically mid 14 teens, or it's the point of control, you know, that bottom of the high volume area uh, around 1400. So there could be a little bit of downside, and there would n not necessarily be anything wrong. Um, I just want to say be careful. Uh, Use your stops. If you get stopped out, it's not a big deal. It's better to get stopped out and lose a little bit of money and then see it go on without you versus not getting stopped out, letting your position ride, and it just continue down, you know, towards 1400, let's say, and you're in a position where your emotions take over and you thought, you know, it wasn't supposed to go down this far. But it did, and I'm holding it, and now I have a bigger loss than what I originally wanted to take. Don't do that. It kills your confidence. So stick with the focus that you want to manage risk. Right now, this trailing stop, and it has not been perfect on the way perfect on the way up. It's gotten stopped out. But realize, once it has gotten stopped, we balance for a little bit. So here we are again, and that's why I have these black lines drawn. We're in balance here. So this is what you're expecting. And the, and the fact, the idea that the point of control for the current month, which is ending in a week, is up at these levels gives you a reason to believe, hey, we're going to see a move from the market around this 1450, 1460 level, this zone here, and it's going to be significant enough for the month of October. I'm telling you, time and time again, this happens. Look at last month. Last month, where does the point of control form? 1400, where do we get a move off of in, uh, in September, excuse me, 1400 up to 1468. So you see the idea here. Back in July, point of control, where does it form? 1348. In August, what happens? We test the point of control and we go from 1350 up to 1425. These are the moves that we're catching every single month and we're up you know, here we go again, up to the beginning of October, we have our point of control set. Now, could it easily retrace in the next week down to 1436, where that becomes the point of control? Of course it can. Uh, just, you know, when it happens, it happens. But for right now, the point of control is up at 1454.25 to be exact. So let's focus on that and let's manage our risk accordingly. That's why on the queues, I bought put uh, I bought put calendars on the queues. The long leg expires this week. 
The short leg expired this past Friday. What's the trade? I bought the 70 calendar put uh, this past expiration on Friday and the uh, expiration this Friday. What that gives me is protection for the rest of the month in the NASDAQ. So we have the point of control forming way up here. And if the NASDAQ chooses to dive, for this week, I bought protection for $0.27 cents each. Ridiculous. Great risk-reward ratio considering the market could pull back on almost 5% and nothing would really be wrong with the uptrend. So just take account of that potential. Let's manage our risk, but let's stay bullish. So, for example, Wells Fargo. This is a trade that was working out really nicely just one week ago, and we've retraced that entire move. Now, the trade went from profit zone, I think it was around a double, down to a break even, but I'm still holding the position because if we get a rally in October, then I'm, you know, I'm looking for this position to work out. However, it's hovering around a break even right now. Let's put it this way. On Monday or Tuesday, you know, depending on what's, what's going on, and it's off the 20 moving average, just to let you know. Um, but if on Monday or Tuesday this thing decides to break below those levels, I don't care what it is. You know, if that spread that I bought, the call spread, if those are in negative territory by any means, I'm going to drop them so quick. I do not want to lose more, you know, than a couple of cents on this trade. So the fact that it's break even small profit territory right now. You want to see it bounce off these levels and you want to see it go. I don't necessarily want this to continue to lag. Um, the reason why is because, bear with me, we're looking for a trade off the point of control for the year on Wells Fargo. And the fact that, let me give you an example, Home Depot, point of control for the year and then you saw a continuation to the upside. That's what we want in Wells Fargo. So this thing better take off pretty soon. One thing to recognize, huge volume. So if we see a reversal off this, perhaps that's a good thing. You know, it, it's really hard for me, to be honest, to put too much emphasis into these big volume days. I mean, just personally, unless if it's a flush out, um, it's just hard for me to tell if it has any significance until we're in hindsight. So uh, I still stick with the trade, but I want to manage my risk. I'm not going to take a loss on this. Similarly, uh, DuPont. This is a trade that was up a decent amount. It's still in the green. Uh, Percentage-wise, it's probably around 10%, uh, but they're December calls, so we have a while on this. Um, what we want to see is this DuPont to, con to continue excuse me, to trickle up. What we're looking at right now is point of control. We have you know, a nice little balance range. We have our highs, and now we have you know, a series of higher lows, does this bounce off of this point of control here and make some type of significant move higher? I hope so. That's what I'm looking for. However, if this thing goes into negative territory, just like Wells Fargo, I'm not, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to take a loss on this. I'm managing my risk. You know, despite the fact that, you know, DuPont, you know, it's, it's higher from where I bought the options, that's not my plan. My plan is to be a risk manager and not allow for winners to become losers. That is not good for your trader psychology. So uh, let's continue to focus on that. Now ConocoPhillips, this is a name that's in the green for me, so I'm not necessarily concerned about this. What I want to see, just like the theme on, on the entire uh, trading, in my opinion, the broad market right now, is you want to see buyers on weakness, regardless of what the prices are. If we get a, a deep pullback, you still want to see the buyers on weakness. You do not want to see this market start to falter and you know make lower lows and lower highs. If your names start doing that, that's a sign. But don't you know don't micromanage this because if you look at the long term theme, bear with me a second. If you look at the long term theme, consolidation, but where are we coming from three years from now, three years ago? We're coming from lower prices. So as we consolidate uh, you know, against this point of control, if we stay above this point of control, that's what you want to see. So watch this uptrending channel. 
and see how it resolves. Is this a bigger triangle that's going to break out, or is this a you know a channel on a daily chart that eventually fizzles out and maybe we retest uh, the point of control for the year? You know, that's just those are things that you must consider um, for longer term trades, and this is what I consider a longer term trade. So, and I'm going to go to the year to date chart just because we are pretty far in the year now. Um, so let's see, American Express. Similarly, uh, you're looking for an explosion off this point of control level. What did we get? Well, we got a nice one-day rally, kind of suckered me in. Now I'm in a losing trade. However, I'm going to let this work. I have four weeks till option expiration on this call spread, and I want to see it work in my favor. Um, now, if it comes back to the point of control, to this you know trend line zone, whatever you want to call it, um, and we don't get a bounce with solid volume, then I will look to exit this position. But even if this position goes, you know, the spread costs me, I think, like 70 cents or something. It's a 60 by 62 half, so this thing does have to move. Um, but if we're in a position, you know, I'm, I'm not really concerned if this is a position that goes against me um, 60, 70, 80 percent. It's just not a big position. And that's why you, you position in scales. You put yourself in a, in a position to risk, you know, have a diverse enough portfolio that you're not risking the house on any trade. Because in my opinion, every trade's the same, unless if you're talking about being long gold, um, <laughs> which you know, continues to work, obviously. We're getting a little bit of resistance here, but we should. We have had a run up from the value area low from this point of control breakout, which I spotted the day before it broke out. And uh, here we go, a breakout to the upside, huge push up. And don't ignore this. Zoom out a little more. And you can see this thing, you know, looks like it's just getting started again. You had lower, uh, lower highs. You had flat, you know, flat lows. You started to make higher lows. You know, you had a little triangle here, and then bam, a breakout off of the point of control, you know, in this case, the last three years, and a push higher. I don't think this is the end. Could it be short-term resistance? Of course. It could easily pull back, um, you know, 30, 40 bucks, and nothing would be wrong with it. Similarly, silver. Now, this is a little bit different, and I'm going to, you know, as far as the volume profile structure, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I think silver and gold you know, they'll continue to, to go up over time. But for right now, I do think, and this is just my personal opinion, I do think that gold may have a little more outperformance. Um, and that's just to say that where it is in the chart, gold is closer to piercing those highs again. We're back at, you know, this, I guess you could call it a triple top versus silver. It's just a little bit of a steeper mountain to climb. So I do think you can be long both names, gold, silver, whatever. Um, but manage your risk. Um, realize that gold is, you know, the better. As far as the thesis, if, the, if your thesis is, you know, money printing, etc., then I do think gold is your choice. But for a little more speculation, maybe a little more uh, outperformance, you know, go for silver, but I have to say my gold position is um, about four times my uh, silver position, just to put it in perspective. So uh, go with that. Okay, let's continue. Let's Coke. Uh, resistance here. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. Look at the amount of volume here. Uh, just a day ago, I said you want to look for, well, obviously potential selling. Uh, but we had increasing volume here against a potential resistance. And what I said was you want to see this thing break higher. Well, guess what? We had huge selling volume today. Huge. Just be aware of that. We have a lower high now. In my opinion, a successful lower high. Now you're looking for potential support. Uh, you know, to make it easy, we could do the value area high. However, you do have a couple of levels. Going this high volume area here, um, you know, looks like a, a likely target. So what ha what I did was I decreased my Coke position by 25 
percent uh, for some small profits just to manage my risk, right? Let's raise a little cash. Let's not be afraid to, you know, let's not just buy blind and expect to sell higher. Let's manage our risk. Let's take good entries and, you know, continue to make our goal, which is to continue to make money. Um, you know, on the opposite side, you have Altria Group. This is a name bought on the 19th. We have two days of great outperformance. This is my best working position for the week. And I, I wish I bought more, frankly, but I didn't. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes. So you just kind of let it do what it's going to do. I expect that it pushes towards 34.50, closes this gap. Um, you know, I, I marked off this zone here. Maybe you want to, you know, be aware of it. But I do think that's where Altria is going. And, uh, you know, they just paid their dividends. So people are probably trying to accumulate more uh, at cheaper prices for the next dividend and the next, you know, a pre potential appreciation in price. So just be aware of that. Let's see. Yum. This is another name that continues to work. It's really starting to touch our profit zone. Remember, 67 half by 70 call spreads expiring in October. This is, we you know, bought these. I don't, I think it was right around here. I, I don't remember exactly when. Um, maybe it was right off the point of control for the year. But it's working. It's, we're closing this gap. This is a position that you just, you know, just monitor. Just make sure that it's not, doesn't have huge down days, etc. If it, you know, goes sideways, down a little bit, up a little bit, ignore it. Try to hold it till we get up towards 70 and, uh, you know, look to take profits there. Not Diamond Offshore. However, Diamond Offshore, um, you know, kind of looks interesting. Consolidation at, you know, at this upper level point of control. Moving average, moving straight up, good momentum, good buying off the moving average, good volume, good buy volume. Um, to, you know, this looks like it's going higher. This looks like a breakout, to be honest. Um, okay, it, you know, it looks all right. 73 looks like some solid resistance, but um, up towards 80 maybe if you get a broad market push. Uh, you know, that's just some random analysis right there. But, okay, Southern, um, point of control, as long as this high volume area holds, you're good on this, in my opinion. If you know, one thing I'm interested in, just kind of look at it. Fifty percent retracement on a what five percent dividend payer at the point of control for the year. Two thirty-three moving average. Huh. Probably not a bad uh, time to look to get involved in a dividend payer. Just kind of pointing that out. All right. Uh, let's cover some commodities. Oil. This point of control for the year certainly did its thing on oil. Bear with me one second. Okay, point of control for the year. We did pierce above it, but notice when we did pierce above it, what happened the next day? What was the volume like the next day? So you get a good two-day reversal here, and uh, people who have taken my trading course know that this is you know a pattern that we look for as far as you know the setup. So. I just kind of want to point that out there. Um, let's go to copper. Now the point of control has shifted on pop, on copper. So the point of control was up, was down here. It's called 345 or so. Now it's up at 382. So what do I think? Well, I think if we don't recapture these levels on copper, uh, say above, hold 375 or so, hold these current lows, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit of trouble for copper. Notice the point of control for the year. Uh, uh, 382.46. One day have we closed above that level. The rest, selling. Sellers have controlled the, those days. So just realize that. Freeport, if you're long, um, you know, this high volume area here. Look at, look at how accurate this is. We touch this high volume area, which you can see is drawn in blue, and bam, literally resistance from, you could have sold it up there, 43.65. And now it's trading 40.65, $3 in one week. What a fade that is. But you have to understand the levels and the potential for, you know, pullback, have a broad understanding, a good perception of the market, levels where it could potentially pull back. And now, you know, obviously on Freeport, you're looking at the value area high as support. Is this high volume area going to hold? And, you know, just based off of the look of copper, copper looks a little range bound, to be honest. I could easily... You know, say copper moves back down towards 350. Um, 
you know, whether it does or not, we're going to have to see. But just keep in mind on Freeport, you can probably buy at better prices if you're looking to be a buyer there. I just kind of want to point that out. Volatility index, just want to say that's back down at the lower end of the range. It's been hovering down here. Hey, last time we have been down at these levels has the right to be a buyer or seller of volatility. You have to say buyer. It's come down here three times. It's consolidated here, but we've moved higher since. So I'm not saying it can't go lower. I'm just saying that here we are on the volatility index at back down at these levels where it's been right to be a buyer. So, all right, uh, Euro, you know, we faded this. A point of control for the year, <clears throat> excuse me, for the year, and it was a great trade. I took the trade off too early. It was 20, 25% gains, nothing too crazy, but definitely a good trade. Um, you know, perhaps a trade that continues to work. I think people who are trying to buy the euro on weakness here, um, I just don't think it's the right move right now. I think that you can wait for consolidation, uh, wait for lower levels. I do think you know, this point of control is your ceiling for right now. And the reason why is because look at the price action off of that so far. So far, we have had lower highs, lower lows, except for on Friday, where you had just an inside day. But sellers dominated. Look how it closed. So just realize that. So if we, and I'm sure we will test this again. That's what the market does in an uptrend. We go up, we go down, and then we retest and probably make new highs. So I'm saying that this is your short-term ceiling. And just be aware of that. Now the dollar, the U.S. dollar, we're getting support at the point of control. I you know, kind of talked about, I think it was last weekend, that I don't necessarily want to be a buyer of the dollar, but I want to recognize that it's at a level where it should bounce or stabilize, which, which means the market, the S&P, you know, is at probably a level where it could pull back. So manage your risk. Don't buy blind. Um, you know, I'm really, and this is just my personal feelings, um, Apple, sure, it's, it's going higher. $705 is not the high. I totally get that. But Apple's gotten to a level where there's so much optimism in the stock, I feel like we need a shakeout. And, you know, if, if we got down to 600 on Apple, I would probably be buying with both hands, uh, just to let you know. But Right now at 700, it's, you know, other than a small placeholder position, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. I just, you know, it's had a great run this year, 400 to 700, but let's take a breather. Uh, that's personally how I feel. It, you know, I'm, I'm involved in Apple. I still long Apple, not a big position. Um, but I just feel like there needs to be some weak hands shaken out, sort of like we saw back in April. Uh, would love to see that because I will be a buyer of the weakness. So... Anyways, I hope this, oh, one more video. Intel. Okay. Get rid of the lines. All right, Intel, 52-week lows. Uh, or, I'm sorry, year-to-date lows. Is that something necessary that you want to be buying? Well, it depends. Um, what's the value like on Intel? Let's zoom out a little more. What have people been buying? Where have people been buying Intel for the last two years? Well, the value area low for the last two years is right at current levels. And the last time we were at these levels, it was a great time to be a buyer. But what's the difference? Well, last time, people watch these moving averages. When they're both moving up, people will be more willing to buy the weakness. Now, uh, well, one's flatlining, but the shorter term is definitely moving down. So realize that any buy here would be for a snap back, back towards uh, this high volume area here. And then, you know, you look for a potential retest of the lows. That's the market balancing. That's the buyers and sellers um, doing what's necessary at these levels. Also notice the point of control formed at these higher levels, you know, gave you a breakout, whatever, came back down. But notice the last, the last sell signal was right against the point of control, and then it flushed. So just keep that in mind. So Intel Let's go back one more. You know, we're at this point of our uh, high volume area here. But maybe it needs to come back down to 2135 to be a lot more interesting. The point of control for the last three years is three years, right? Two years. So I'm not actually I would probably be a buyer of both, you know, both hands with Intel down in the low twenties there, because that is, in my opinion, a value play. That beats a government bond or whatever the case, corporate bond 
tenfold in my opinion. If you're buying a quality name that generates tons of cash and pays a dividend of say three percent, you know, you're looking at potential annual turns terms returns, excuse me. If you're buying at the right levels, you can expect returns north of 15-20% on a slow mover like Intel just by buying at the right spot. And that, you know, 15 to 20 percent, that's not a huge move, but just to buy and hold and say, okay, I'll sell, you know, when it reaches, you know, 29, 27. Um, you know, I'm just saying for an example. You're buying at the best spots when you're doing that with volume profile. So I you know, I, I hope this video helps and I hope you stay along for it because you know, what I'm trying to teach here is so fundamental. Like, it, it can change your life, and you just have to let, let it, you just have to learn it, and then apply it, and be a student of the market, be a student of how volume is created in the market, be a student of the price action, and you'll find a, you know, this source, a, a, res, a resource to make money as long as you want to trade with discipline. So, um, you know, take this to heart, take the next step, do what's necessary to become a better trader. You know it's in you, but you have to take the next step. You have to stop taking bad trades or stop allowing trades become bigger losers or losers in general. If it's a winner, maybe write a rule with yourself that you will never let that trade become a loser once it becomes a winner. And I'm not talking about, you know, when it's just bouncing up and down. I'm talking about when it makes a move off of your entry price, when it makes a meaningful move. You put your stop to break even, and you just basically hope that, you know, okay, this is going to go without me. I'm going to be able to trail my stop for profits. Or if you want to keep it at a break even, say, okay, if it comes back down to these levels, I'm all right with that, but I'm not willing to give up money. So just kind of keep that in mind. So anyways, a lot of great things uh, coming for, for what you're watching here. If you want to experience it, if you want to take it to the next level, um, revamping the website, making it a great tool for you to basically have something that's reliable, something that you can go to, um, something that's objective. And I'm, I'm talking about volume profile, you know, initiated with, continuing education, learning from those who use it and apply it to your trading and then spread your wings and go, you know, take the market for what it's worth and make money. Um, so anyways, I'm getting sidetracked here, but I just want to say that you can do this. Just have faith in what you're doing and what you're applying and you'll realize how useful how, how amazingly accurate you will become over time in the markets. So take care, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you next week.